Hi everyone. Today's video is about heat and how it affects glass. If you think you already know all you need to know about strain points, annealing, melting points, and viscosity, just turn this video off now and move on to the next one. But if you're curious about these things, or even if you just want to make sure your understanding is correct, follow along. You won't be disappointed. The first thing we need to understand is expansion. When glass heats up, it expands. Different types of glass expand at different rates. This rate is stated as the expansion coefficient of glass, commonly called the COE. Borosilicate glass has an expansion coefficient of 33 times 10 to the minus 7th. A soft glass like ephedra has a COE of 104 times 10 to the minus 7th. If you combine two glasses with differing expansion coefficients, they cannot return to room temperature without breaking apart. This is called incompatibility. Glasses with the same or similar expansion coefficients are said to be compatible. Only compatible glasses can be worked together. Here is a simple pull test to demonstrate compatibility. First, let's combine two different borosilicate glasses, which have an expansion coefficient of 33 times 10 to the minus 7. The pull remains straight as it cools, which indicates compatibility. Now, let's combine some borosilicate glass with some ephedra, which has an expansion coefficient of 104 times 10 to the minus 7th. As you can see, the pull is not straight at all. If you ever question whether two glasses are compatible, this pull test is a quick and easy way to find out. There are two primary states of glass. These are called elastic and plastic. Glass is said to be elastic in that it returns to its original shape after deformation pressure is applied. Simply put, if you bend a thin glass rod, it will return to its original shape when pressure is released. It is entirely elastic. When glass is hot enough, any deformation force that is applied permanently changes the shape of the glass. If you bend it, it stays bent. It has lost its elasticity. It has become plastic. From room temperature to 949 degrees Fahrenheit, borosilicate glass exhibits entirely elastic behavior. This means that the glass can experience stress, either physical or thermal, but it will not remember it after the stressing force ceases. At 950 degrees Fahrenheit, this changes, and the glass begins to remember stress. This temperature is called the strain point. From the strain point to 1510 degrees Fahrenheit, the glass gradually changes from elastic to plastic. At 1510, it becomes entirely plastic. This temperature is called the softening point. Add another 600 to 800 degrees and the viscosity becomes low enough to easily manipulate the glass. This is the working temperature range. Between 950 Fahrenheit and 1510 Fahrenheit, the glass is in a state that is partly elastic and partly plastic. The closer to the strain point it is, the more elastic it is. The closer to the softening point it is, the more plastic it is. I sometimes refer to this range as the annealing range because the glass will anneal at any temperature in that range. Obviously, at 951 degrees, the glass will take an impractical amount of time to anneal, and at 1509 degrees, there is a significant danger of the glass deforming under its own weight. So a compromise temperature of 1050 degrees Fahrenheit is said to be the ideal annealing temperature because the chance of deformation is minimal and the time required to anneal is acceptable. But this is not an absolute. There may well be situations where a lower or higher annealing temperature is called for. But what does it mean to anneal glass? 
I am so glad you asked. When glass is heated unevenly, it expands more where it is hotter than where it is cooler. This creates a shear-like pressure between the two areas of uneven heat. This pressure is called stress. When temperature-induced stress is introduced to the glass above the strain point, it can cause faults when the glass cools to room temperature. To prevent this, after working the glass, the stress is baked out by soaking the piece at 1050 degrees Fahrenheit for a period of time. At this temperature, the glass has enough elasticity to resist deformation, but also just enough plasticity for the stress to relax out of the glass. This process is called annealing. Stress is not something you can normally see, but we actually can see it in clear glass if we view it under a polariscope. A polariscope is simply a viewing device with two polarized filters with their polarization axes set at right angles to each other. Only parallel light rays can make it through the two filters. These light rays are refracted by the glass into their component colors and appear to us as a spectrum. Just FYI, my polariscope here is really just an iPhone with a polarized fishing sunglass lens on the camera. iPhones have polarized screens. Bet you didn't know that. In an annealed piece of glass, the spectrum should appear organized and conform with the shape of the glass. But stress causes small variations in density that break up the spectrum, providing us with a visible way to detect stress. Here is a borosilicate marble that has been fully annealed. Note the way the spectrum does not change no matter which way the marble is rotated. What you are looking at now is a 20 millimeter solid rod of Cymax that has had the end of it heated and cooled. You can see where the heat ended. The lines of stress suddenly become perpendicular to the surface. This is where cracking will occur if this rod is not annealed. Expansion from heat is not the only factor that can cause stress. Differences in viscosity can cause stress too. So what is viscosity and why should you care about it? Viscosity is defined as a measure of a fluid's resistance to flow. Of course, viscosity in glass only matters when it is hot, since it does not flow at all when it is entirely elastic. But as glass ranges up and down through the temperature range, its viscosity changes too. It is less viscous when hotter and more viscous when cooler. The viscosity of glass across the temperature range can be plotted on a graph like this. That curve is called the viscosity curve. Now here's the kicker. Different glasses can share the same expansion coefficient, but have slightly different viscosity curves. This means that as the glass ramps up and down through the temperature range, the differing viscosities push and pull on each other, causing stress. For this and other reasons, annealing cycles consist of several steps, each time to allow the glass to attain a stable state at that temperature. The transitions between those steps is also timed to allow the glass to attain the new temperature slowly so that viscosity differences don't cause problems on the way down. Most annealing cycles have what is called a soak at the strain point. This allows the glass to return to total elasticity gradually and to sit there and stabilize before cooling to room temperature. Now aren't you glad you watched this video? Did you learn anything new? If so, please like and subscribe to my channel. Click that little ram's horn down in the right hand corner. You won't be sorry. See you next time.